Now, where do we want to use that post's data? Well, basically in all views, but let's start with the starting page. There we want to show our posts, but only the latest posts. Now it turns out that we only have three dummy posts here. I actually always want to show the latest three posts. So here the result will technically be the same as on the all posts page. But if we had more dummy posts, and of course you can add more if you want to, then there would be a difference. Anyways, the goal therefore here is to get the latest posts and we get them by looking at our posts, but now we essentially want to, to filter them or we want to, well, we want to get the free latest posts. And how can we do that? Well, what we want to do first is sort our posts. So we have the sorted posts here, which we get by accessing all posts and calling sort on that list. It's a list, so we can use the built-in sort method. Now, sort actually allows us to specify a custom key then. And with key, we can then point at a function which extracts the key from a dictionary which we want to use for sorting. In this case, I'd like to use the date. So, therefore, what I'll do here is I'll add a little helper function here in this file and we could create a separate helpers file for that of course but I'll create it here because we'll only use it temporarily anyways and I'll name it get date and expect to get a single post as a parameter here and I then want to return post get date because that's our key name here or just access date like this. And now we can use get date as a key here. We don't execute get date, we don't add parentheses, instead we just point at get date. And then Python will execute get date for us for every post when it sorts that posts list. So it goes through that posts list, calls get date for every post in that list, to get that date and it then compares all those dates with each other to sort the overall array. So this should give us some sorted posts and now to get the last three elements we can use our sorted posts here and simply use list slicing to access the last three elements like this. And this is standard Python syntax for accessing items in a list. This simply starts at the end of the list, goes three items to the left, so to say. So it starts at the end of the list and then moves three items in front of the end of the list and then takes all items from that position it moved to, so three items away from the end of the list, to the end of the list. That's what this syntax does. And by doing so, we grab those three last items which again, in this case, are all the items, but if it would be a longer list, we would only get three items instead of all items. And then it's the latest posts, which we want to pass to the starting page to be rendered there. So we want to pass some context, which means a dictionary, to our render function here. And then there we could set a posts key. This key name is up to you though, and set our latest posts as a value for that key to expose our latest posts stored in this variable to our template through that variable, which will then be available in the template. So now to use that, we can go to the template file, to the index.html file, and in there we'll now have access to that posts variable. We'll have access to that posts variable because we are providing it as context to this render function. So here, I basically just want to repeat this line of code for all my posts. Hence, I will go here and add the for tag and then loop through post and posts. This name here, post, is up to you. This here, posts, is not up to you or not entirely because that is this variable which is exposed through context to this template. Now, as you learned, we need to end this for block and therefore I'm doing this here 
And we're basically just repeating this include tag all the time for all those posts. And that is something you can do. You can have more DTL logic inside of such a for loop if you want to. With that, if we save this and I go back here, I get an error that function object has no attribute sort. Okay, that's an error. I have the posts function here and I also named this variable posts. This doesn't work. I'll name this all posts here and then use all posts sort here. Otherwise we have a name clash and it tries to access this function, which of course is not the idea. So all posts is my new variable name up there, which we also should use down here. And I got another error here now that I look at this. Of course, by calling the sort method, I'm sorting all posts in place. So this original list gets changed. I instead here wanna generate a new list, which is based on the old list, but sorted. And of course that's done by not using the sort method, but by using the built-in sorted function and passing all posts to that and then the key. Then it also sorts this, but it returns a new list here instead of sorting the existing list, which is not what I want here. I don't wanna change the existing list. With that, if we reload, that looks better. And we now got three posts here. Now, currently it's always the same content being output here though, because all we're doing at the moment is just repeating this include statement. Now we wanna utilize the post data in the include statement. And the good thing is that you already learned that inside of included snippets, you have access to the data which is available in the template that does include this snippet. So here we got post available. So let's use it here in this included snippet. For this, let's go to post HTML and for example, output the real title here with double curly braces for this interpolation syntax and output post title. So accessing that title field in that dictionary. If we do that and reload, it crashes. The reason for this, and that's why I'm showing this, is that there's one special thing to know about accessing dictionary keys in templates. There, you don't use square brackets as you would be doing it in regular Python code. Instead, there, you always use the dot notation. So what would be post square brackets title in regular Python is simply post dot title in the template. So just as you would access a field on an object, this is how you also access these keys or these entries in dictionaries inside of templates. It is just something you need to know, which is why I'm showing it here. If we now save that and reload, that post title is being output. And of course, it's not just a title now, it's also this excerpt text. So here we wanna have post.excerpt because we have that excerpt key in our post dummy data, here it is. And uh, we also wanna output the proper image. Now here we actually have a path which is hard coded and it should still partially be hard coded. Blog slash images slash should still be there, but then the image name of course differs based on which post is being rendered. So how can we get our variable in there? Well, what we can do is we can strip the part which will be variable. So in this case, the file name, and then also use a filter here. You can use a filter here as well and use the built-in add filter, which adds a value to the value in front of the filter. You then have a colon for that add filter and you can learn about the exact syntax of the add filter in the official docs, of course, in case you're wondering why I know that. So you have a colon here and after the colon, the value which you wanna add. So in this case, that would be post.image. So accessing that post variable and there the image dictionary field. And that adds this post image variable name to this path, which is then turned into a static URL by Django. So if we save that, we now have those different images here. 
we also want to make sure that the URL is constructed correctly. And there I'm currently hard coding a slug. That's no longer correct. Instead, we have a slug field with the actual slug and therefore we can just reference that there. Instead of that hard coded string, we can just add post.slug to access that slug dictionary field. With that, if we reload, we also have different URLs these links lead to. Now, last but not least, I also want to make the alt tag of the image dynamic. And here we can just interpolate, since that's really just the value of a built-in HTML attribute. And hence, I'll use the double curly braces syntax and access post.title to set my title as an alt text. And with that, we're successfully outputting those latest posts. It was quite a bit of work and probably some things you haven't seen before, you haven't done before, like this dot notation here, but that's exactly why we also have this kind of project in this course. Now you know how to build this static URL with dynamic variables and that you use the dot notation in your templates even when accessing fields on dictionaries.